At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to create and render a simple box. Now that we've completed an overview of the interface, let's create a very simple box. So let's go to Sketch, New Sketch, Rectangle, Two Point Rectangle, and select the bottom plane to work on. Now from the center origin, click and drag out. The easiest way to add dimensions here is to enter them directly. So I'm going to enter 100 millimeters, press tab on the keyboard, enter 100 millimeters again, then press return. That locks that square at 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, and if we click zoom to fit, we'll get a better view of it. Now what we want to do is turn our square into a cube. To do that, if we click create, extrude, and then click the square, then we can use the arrow and lift it up to whatever height that we wish. But if we want exact dimensions, the most accurate thing to do is go to the extrude dialog window and enter a distance of 50 millimeters, then click OK. So now we've got a box. Let's select fit to window, right click on the canvas to launch the marking menu, select press pull, then drag a selection window over the entire box. This will select all of the edges. And you'll note that the dialog window will change to fill it. Now I want to put some radius on the edges. And we're going to enter a radius measurement directly of eight millimeters. Now let's put a hole in the box. The easiest way to do this is to go to the toolbar, click create, then click hole. Then select the top face on the cube. This is where we're going to drill the hole through. Then in the dialog window, we want to make sure that the extent of the hole is set to all, which means it will go all the way through the cube. Then enter a hole diameter of 40 millimeters. If we click and drag the cross on the hole, we can lock it to center, or you can move it wherever you like. Then just select OK in the hole dialog window. And then if you want to use the view cube or the orbit tools to orbit around, we can see that the hole goes all the way through the box. And we can also use the view cube to rotate the views. So we can click front, right, top. And if we click the home view, that will take us to the isometric perspective. Let's just save that now. So click save, then enter the name cube, then click save. And if we open the data panel, we can see that our cube is saved to our project, my first box. So let's close the data panel. Now what I want to do is go to the render environment and we'll do a very quick render of the cube. At the bottom of the screen you'll note the render gallery and Fusion automatically renders four different views of any model that's brought into the render environment. The views are default to top, front, right and the home view. Because this is the first time I've opened up the cube in the render environment, we haven't got any renders yet. But as we're working through the exercise, Fusion will be creating those renders on the cloud. In the render environment, if we click Appearance, we can change the appearance of the material. We can choose any appearance we like from the Fusion library. For example, I'm going to paint it with a glossy blue enamel. And to do that, I just select it and drag it onto the material. If we like an appearance, then we can save it to our favorites. For example, I've got an Autodesk Orange here, which again, I can drag over and apply to the material. Additionally, we have options to set up our scene. And as a quick overview, I can change the background color. So I'm gonna change that from gray to white, click apply and click okay. There's also an environment library and we can take any environment from our library and apply it to our design. Let's take a quick look at Fusion's in canvas renderer. This is a really useful tool prior to saving out high quality photorealistic renderings. Use it to get a quick idea of the kind of view that you want or lighting, surface or appearance. There are three options for quality settings here, normal, quick or advanced. Obviously the advanced setting will take slightly longer. And as you can see, it's got a grainy kind of effect as it builds up all the complexity of the bodies, lighting effects, surface qualities. And the longer we leave that running, the more passes and the more definition we'll see. And when we're happy with our render setup, all we need to do is click render and we can choose whether to do a cloud render or a local render, work through the options and select our quality for resolution. And if we're cloud rendering, Fusion will do that in the background while we're busy doing other things. 
So while I've been talking through the exercises, the four views are now completed in the render gallery, and this also completes the lesson.